Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, yeah, recently I'm learning the stochastic calculus. So in order to benefit my learning, so I will make a few videos and uh, start from beginning and hope to go wherever I can. And if you want to see more uh, mathematical video, then you can check out my video list. Uh, I would say that uh, I have some background in the like abstract mathematics. So this is the uh maybe the third time I learned stochastic calculus. But previous previously I didn't like spend time to. I really understand the detail, right? So hopefully I will make some highly, I will make the video to be like more, more consistent. Uh, okay. Okay, so. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so uh, first video that's uh, very simple, just introduce the very important object called the Vanier process, or basically the Brownian motion. So this video will be very short, just talk about Brownian motion. And uh, the definition is very simple. So one idea is that, so when I say process, basically the idea is basically, uh, people also call it stochastic process. So stochastic process basically means that uh, for each t greater or equal to zero, then you have a, a random verb, a random verb. Okay, so maybe it's called RT. So the idea is that given, uh, so basically given any t greater or equal to zero, you associate each t with a probability uh, with the random verb. So you can view the, the so-called stochastic process basically is the continuous, you have a continuous pass. Of random verb. Uh, this is like maybe not so exotic, right? Because, uh, in the mathematics, right, usually or advanced calculus, right, you can study the FST, right, or basically you can also study this kind of thing. That you can imagine that uh, you can create a function which you also have a uh, another continuous variable, or maybe in the algebra topology, right, you can you like. You, in the arbitrary topology, people like to say, oh, if you have a point x0, then you can, right, maybe you have this, you have a path, right, then you can talk about the uh, homotopy, right, homotopy. So hom homotopy basically is also a con maybe because, for example, if this is flat, then I can shrink this path, right? So the homotopy idea is that uh, also you can create a, a path, but uh, you can create many paths, and then each time that the uh, or each variable that you have a path. So basically you can create, a, so in the homotopy, basically we are talking about continuous paths of continuous function. Now I can talk about continuous paths of a random variable. It's like, it's just an ad hoc, okay. So first one, uh, so this is called the WT, satisfy the, the W0, zero, zero. Zero means a zero random variable. And the W has the independent increment. Independent increments. Don't worry. Okay. So for t greater than zero, that uh, I can study wt plus u minus wt. So two random variable can one can do a difference. Uh, for u greater than zero, then this guy is independent, independent. Uh, to ws, where s less or equal to t. So each, basically, sim simple. Uh, simple saying is that uh, given any three interval. Uh, let's say t1, t2, t3, and the uh, wt3 minus wt2 is independent of wt2 minus wt1 for given any three uh, t1, t2, t3. Okay. Okay, the third one is that uh, uh, wt is basically n0, 1, okay, uh, t. Okay, so this means that uh, wt is Gaussian. W is Gaussian. Gaussian, a normal distribution with mean 0. And the uh, variance one, uh, sorry, variance t, uh, variance t. Okay, and uh, uh, okay, so this is also also w t plus u minus w t. W t plus u is basically the uh, n u. Okay, so just t plus u minus t. Okay. Okay, so uh, number four is that uh, W has a continuous pass. So simply speaking, WT is uh, is continuous in T. Okay, so we satisfy the all these four. Basically, it's called the Brownian motion or Vanier process. Okay, so 
Yeah, that's it. So simply speaking, that is that you can view EWTs and zero T, and basically, I think all the calculation is important if you know these two. Uh, if you know third and uh, also one and two, so you can forget about the the, the first. So basically, you only know the independent of the increments and the first first W zero zero WTs and zero T and W plus U minus WTs and 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 zero U. This is like always trivial. Okay, so. Okay, so the we will finish this video very quickly. So just the common property. Now these are so so uh so common that uh, you should remember. So W T is you remember is N zero T. Okay. So first one trivial that the expectation was expectation of W T right, is zero. And by definition, that the expectation value of W T squared is basically the variance of W T is basically T, right? By definition. Okay. Uh, now third one is the correlation. So correlation of uh, so basically you can ask the correlation between sorry, not correlation, covariance of W. You can ask covariance of W T and W S, and there uh, will be minimum of T S. So I will prove this, and the first one is you can start from here and prove the correlation of. That's the correlation of W T W S will be just the mean of T S and the by square root of T S. Okay, so it is tri also trivial. Uh by three implies four by definition. Okay, so the rest is just very simple. What well, is the covariance of uh W T and W S? Okay, so let's consider uh, T greater than S. So I can compute the covariance of W T W S. And uh, remember that uh, by by the second property that the uh, W T and W S are W T minus W S are linear independent uh, in are independent. So we have covariance of W T minus W S plus W S W S. So I can write as a covariance of W T minus W S W S plus covariance of W S W S. And this guy is zero, right? Because W T minus W S minus F S are independent, so they are independent. Zero plus what is this? Just variance of W S, just S, right? So we prove which we should prove that covariance of W T W S is minimum of T S. Okay, uh, so trivial. Okay, now uh, okay, there is a useful fact that uh, you, one can easily prove. If a W T two W T one and say T one less than T two, then uh, you can take a T two minus T one and uh, call this Z, and then Z is a uh a, a standard normal for random variable. So T is a n zero one, and then Z is independent to uh W T two minus W T uh sorry Z is independent of what. You see, yeah. So this independent standard no more random variable. Basically, we know that uh, yeah. So basically, yes, it's this independent uh no standard no more random variable. Yeah. So reason as I say that uh, we know that uh the standard uh independent standard no more random variable to W T one. Okay, because. Z is like WT2 minus WT1, WT2 minus WT1 is independent of WT1. And uh, why is it true? Because uh, you can calculate the covariance of this guy, right? And uh, as we just proved, and this uh, basically is T2, right? But I mean, as we just proved before, right? You can, uh, we since we know this, yeah, it's a T1. Oh, sorry, it's T1. Okay. So basically, you can start from these two, and then you can prove this is true. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So this is the very basic starting point. So yeah, that's it. So next time we talk about some interesting things.